There we go. There's a fish. Oh, that's a nice fish. Came up, hit that hard. That's crappie. That's our target species right there. Oh boy, he's feisty. Okay, come up here, big crappie. All right, there we go. All right, guys, take a look at that. That's it right there. Hello again, fish a lot. It's Johnny Fish a lot here, and I want to go through with you some of the most common mistakes I see almost all fish a lots make out there when it comes to the early spring. And these mistakes cost people a lot, a lot of fish. So don't make these mistakes, and hopefully you can get out in this cold weather and still catch yourself some really nice fish. All right, let's get into it. And the number one mistake I see is that people will just go to warm weather tactics way too quickly. You get a couple of 70 degree days, 60 degree days, and you'll feel really good, right? Summer's just around the corner. You see yourself sitting on the beach here in a couple of months. Night times is still extremely cold. So if you have a couple of 60 degree days, the night times here are still in the upper 20s, lower 30s many times, and it's still really cold for these fish. These fish's water temperature around here in the middle Atlantic anyway, in New Jersey, is high 40s and low 50s right now. You know, those fish are just too cold to be burning buzz baits and burning spinner baits and ripping crank baits through the water. Boy, it's beautiful out here. Just gonna, just gonna start ripping some spinner baits. Yeah. yeah, I gotta get your fish if I just start ripping some spinner baits. And that's pretty much exactly what happens in this video. So it's early spring, you can tell right there, Ben's excited, he's running all around. You can see that fish a lot next to me there. He is just burning some baits here. He's burning a chatterbait actually. Now I'm just getting myself set up here. I got my peg float set up. I got a 164 ounce jig head with a, with a crappie magnet and watch that bobber right away. Just threw it in there right in that structure you see that concrete that's a structure you want to fish at down goes the bobber hook set and bass so here you go first cast catch a bass this is early early cold spring fishing tactics here and it works out just great now the fish a lot to my right here he was fishing there quite a while he's not catching anything and he just moves on and he's going to continue to just burn those baits right why fish where i just caught a fish and just slow it down he's just going to keep on moving cast after cast just burning baits burning baits and here's a nice little fish ben's entertained he knows we're going to catch more fish using these early slow spring tactics and that's exactly what we're going to do and so here's another great example of this right here. You see these two fish a lots around the bank. Me and Ben show up. We're enjoying our time. We're going to use these slow moving spring suspend fishing tactics to great effect yet again. But these guys are going to be just burning baits and they're going to just one or two casts, burn baits, move down the bank. One or two casts, burning baits, move down the bank. Now, this is on the end of a cold front that just ran through where the wind was blowing a million miles an hour. It dropped tons of freezing cold rain and these fish are really cold. They just came on the back end of a cold front. And so just burning baits is just not the way to trigger bites. They're just too cold for that. And they're a little lethargic still. So keep in mind too, that even though you have a lot of warming days here, you still have a lot of unpredictable spring weather. Cold fronts are moving through all the time. A cold front is occurring right now. We have like 40 mile per hour winds. It's dumping a ton of freezing cold rain and it's really putting a damper on any significant gains in water temperature that we've got over the last week or so. And so that will put fish right back into their winter holding patterns instead of moving up shallower, taking advantage of warmer spring weather. That's coming, but it's not coming right yet. Typically speaking, this time of year, the fish are going to transition from those winter holding spots up into their pre-spawn areas in shallower water. But keep in mind, and I, I bang this drum all the time, you really want to find the correct location where those fish have access to both deep water and shallower water so they could take advantage of warming conditions and of course they could fall back into more stable water conditions if you have weather like we have right now which is a cold front and a freezing cold front at that also those fish can move into deeper water at nighttime where this past week we had temperatures 27 degrees one morning when I got up to go to work. So that makes it really tough to use really fast moving lure retrieves and things like that to trigger bites. These fish are just warming up. They're still slow. They're still a little bit lethargic. Winter's not quite done yet. So a great thing to do is transition yourself from winter into spring as slowly as the fish are transitioning. So your typical suspend fishing tactics will be really good right now. That's what I use and what I 
I use in the winter time. You could use this with a bobber. Um, that works really, really well because you're dangling that bait or that lure right in front of that fish's face in order to trigger bites. Things like uh, jerk baits, anything that suspends, anything that imitates an injured or dying shad or gizzard shad, something like that. One of those fish that really does struggle in cold weather. Those type of tactics that are more winter tactics will still work very, very well here in the spring. Another huge mistake I see fish lots make out there is they tend to ignore water movement in the early spring. And this costs a ton of people fish. So if you're fishing on a pond or a lake, something that doesn't have natural flowing water, the key thing you want to focus on is the wind. Now, a couple of factors here. One is if you have a very cold wind, like we have today in a cold front, well, those fish might be on the back end of the wind because they're trying to warm up. Now, if that's a warm wind blowing, let's say a warm front is coming through and you have some weather, those fish are very likely going to be in front of that wind taking advantage of easy access to food and comfort because that's going to be the warmer water, right? A warm wind will mix in with that surface water temperature in addition to that sun, and it's really gonna warm things up quite a bit. Those fish are absolutely gonna be on the other side of that, and they're also gonna look for that wind for that water movement so that it pushes food towards them. You combine that water movement with any form of structure that those predatory fish could hide in and ambush their prey, and you got a recipe for success. Now, the same applies to anything you're fishing with a dam or natural moving tides. Most people think when you say current that you're only talking about tides and that's not true. Tide is a form of water movement. Think of it that way. You have the wind, you have dams, you just have natural movement of water and of course you have tidal systems all create water movement and all create incredible opportunities for you to position yourself just right to take advantage of feeding fish. And you can see that right here. I'm facing into the wind. I'm using ultralight. So, you know, yes, it's affecting the distance that I could cast, but it's not really affecting me in this example because I'm casting where the fish are and I'm presenting the bait in the most natural way possible to trigger as many bites as possible. And it's working out fantastically well, as you can see right here. So just keep that in mind when you're fishing in the early spring is those fish are gonna look to take advantage of easy access to food. And this time of year, they may even want to sacrifice a little bit of their comfort in order to fatten up for that spawn that's coming up and they know it's coming up because well it is springtime it's just early in the spring and a really really cold wind may push those fish on the back end of the wind so fish both but if the fish are really trying to duck out of it and find shelter from colder spring cold fronts then i would fish in wind protected areas where those fish have a greater opportunity to warm up and speaking of fish warming up typically what i see is Fish a lots out there will just go out and they'll fish those laydowns, right? They'll fish those stumps in the water, they'll fish those trees in the water, and they're not giving a whole lot of consideration to the sun. Keep in mind, this early in the spring, water temperature is so, so important. These fish have one thing on their minds and one thing on their minds only. They want to get warm and they want to start eating in preparation of the spawn. Those are their two major priorities this early in the spring. So a lot of these laydowns and stuff are adjacent to trees. So branches, trees, limbs, you name it, may have fallen over in the winter time. And so when people get out there and you know they themselves have thought out, that's the first thing they hit. They go out there, they see a laydown, they go out and they fish it. So don't be fooled by really enticing looking laydowns. <laughs> Just make sure you're fishing in areas that are warming up and you're fishing in areas that are exposed to sunlight the best that you can. And directly related to that warming water and the importance of taking advantage of warm water is the time of day that you're fishing. So typically this early in the spring, I will fish the same time periods I look to fish in the winter time and that is later in the day. Now it's getting sunnier and sunnier and the days are getting longer and longer, which is great. So before in the winter, winter time where I would try and fish around 
four o'clock, right before it got dark and cold. In the springtime, I'm gonna try to fish probably between four and six, where after six o'clock, when it gets dark outside, it's gonna start to get cold. But this allows maximum time for that sun to warm up that surface area of the water and especially warm up those shallows where those fish are gonna to look to move up, warm themselves, and get a quick meal. Now, something to keep in mind here, and the big mistake that I see with that, is that fish lots will typically fish at like 12 o'clock in the middle of the day when it's warmest to you. Again, the air temperature is gonna warm up far quicker than water temperature. So you're feeling good, you're out there in 60 or 70 degree water with that 12 o'clock sun beating down on you, but it hasn't had enough time to warm up the, the shallows of that lake or pond or whatever it is that you're fishing on and so therefore you might be fishing in areas where those fish are still in more deeper stable water conditions until that sun really starts to warm things up and then again that's why it's so advantageous to fish later in the day when it's warmer for the fish and another huge mistake i see a lot of fish lots make out there is they will fish with a billion different colors there's typically two type of colors that i really rely upon in the early spring and the winter and that is your bright colors and your dark colors so your bright colors will be chartreuse and white and your dark colors will be like your black and blues your dark blues these type of baits that will be silhouetted in really dark conditions things that look like fish when you're looking at it out of the water I typically avoid in low light conditions or really murky water conditions now keep this in mind if you're talking about chartreuse and white you really Really talking about how those lures appear in dark water or cloudy water or low light conditions and the best way to do this is take a look at professional scuba divers who are trying to film fish in the deepest clearest parts of the ocean and as you get to depth you have less and less light penetration which causes colors to fade at different depths so typically speaking your bright red colors will fade at 15 feet orange colors will fade at 25 feet your yellowish colors will fade at 35 to 45 feet and your green your chartreuse or just white colors will start to fade at 70 feet and this is a pretty common tactic we use for striper fishing as well when those fish are down 65 feet or so we're typically using yellows whites and chartreuse and that's because it really looks like a bunker or some type of bait fish when you actually get it at depth so that just gives you an idea of how the fish are able to see some of these things in the water column <laughs> given that in the early spring you're going to be fishing in cloudy conditions a lot of times rainy conditions cold conditions and that water clarity may not be that clear even if the water clarity is clear you're still not going to get a whole lot of light penetration this early in the spring because the sun's just not as strong as it will be in the summertime and all right so now that we know how fish are going to be able to see certain colors at depth I'll unload a secret here when it comes to springtime fishing and that is that red is an absolutely fantastic color for your selection of baits and lures for targeting these fish because they're going to be moving into these shallow pre-spawn and spawn areas. So you're going to find these fish as the weather gets warmer and as they transition from their winter holding grounds in water depths that are well under 15 feet. And as those fish get into those shallows, that red is going to show up really, really good. The same as chartreuse or white will. And that is just going to trigger a ton of bites as you're selecting your lures, targeting these shallow water springtime fish. So there's a little secret involved with springtime fishing for you, fish lots. Go ahead and try it out and leave me a comment below. Let me know how you make out with that little tip right there. Now getting back to black and blue, these colors are also great for really dark conditions because that lure will be silhouetted perfectly against the background of whatever water you tend to be fishing. Whether that's dark water, cloudy water, silty water, you name it. If you have low light conditions and you have dark water, dark, 
comes up really, really good. And by far the most important tip I could provide to you in this whole video is to keep in mind safety when you're fishing in the early spring. That water temperature is still really, really cold. You're going to need your personal flotation devices, right? Your life jackets. If you're out in a kayak, wear a dry suit. If the water temperature is anywhere near the 50s, you really have to be in a dry suit. Keep in mind, if you enter the water when it's 50 degrees, that's it, just 50 degrees, and you don't have a life jacket on, you have nine minutes before you're essentially incapacitated. If you do have a life jacket on, you have 15 minutes where you're basically incapacitated. And unconsciousness in just 50 degree water will typically come between one and three hours. Death can occur anywhere from four to seven hours if you're not rescued right away on these bodies of water. This is a huge mistake I see, especially with black drum fishing the Delaware Bay or getting out into the Chesapeake, these larger bodies of water where there's a lot of kayakers, there's a lot of small boats out there. They're trying to take advantage of these larger fish moving into spawn. And just the springtime weather is just super unpredictable. It's super nice at one point in the day, 70 degrees, and then the tide turns around or the wind kicks up or a storm comes through. And again, it's freezing cold, it's windy, it gets rough. and you don't want to find yourself in that type of situation. So just be safe out there. Always remember to wear your life jackets and always remember if you're in a kayak and the water temperature is around 50 degrees, always be in a dry suit. And if you want to see just how successful avoiding these mistakes are, go ahead and click on this video right here where we absolutely just dominate crappie and bass using the exact same tactics I discussed in this video. All right, fish lights, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you out there on the water.